that there's between 350 million and 400 million uh, guns in the US today. Um, to put that in perspective, there's 330 million people, so there's more than one gun per person. Hi, I'm Sarah Forster from The National and welcome to this week's edition of A Closer Look. Now this week we have the absolute privilege of being joined with the head of our Washington DC bureau. He's joined us all the way here in Abu Dhabi. Tom, thank you so much for coming into the office for us today. Thank you very much for having me. Very happy to be here. So we're going to be talking about a topic today which is, uh, it's at the forefront of the news in the US almost daily. It is a topic that is discussed all around the world and that is the issue of gun control. It is something that other countries have had to deal with. It's not just a US problem. However, it feels like a problem that the US just cannot shake. So, you know, you yourself are a British uh, journalist. How do you, you know, what was your impression when you first went to the States and had to report on, on um, you know, mass shootings and gun control in general? And has anything changed with the way that you report on it now? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um... So there's been a, a lot of changes. I first moved to America in 2003 um, and I was actually in Colorado, which is where the Columbine um, mm. massacre happened in 1999. Mm. So memories of that terrible event were still relatively fresh in people's mind, minds. And um, I remember the, uh, what, when there was a mass shooting, it, w it seemed relatively rare and it would dominate the cable news headlines for at least a week, perhaps two weeks. They would do deep dives on the, on the victims. Mm -hmm. Um, and over time now, so that's, that's 20 years ago, mm. um, I recently returned to America about two years ago and what really struck me this time was just the quantity of um, mass shootings. Uh, they now happen on an almost daily basis. Mm -hmm. So the attention that each one gets uh, is obviously much shorter. Um, we see the headline and um, but before, we, I, before we're able to really understand much about what happened, often it's on to the next incident. Mm. So just the, um, the regularity of them has become so much more frequent. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a, a, you know, a risk that people have sort of become numb to it and that almost, you know, that, that now people don't think, they think of it as just part of a way of life, really, of living in the States? I think there's probably an element of that. When something happens every day, it stops, being, it stops becoming news. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if it impacts you, anyone that you know or happens in your community, then it brings it home. Um, there was an incident that happened uh, near to where I live in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. That really sort of um, brought it home to me, like, actually, this is a, a real phenomenon that, that, that can affect anyone at any time. Mm. Um, but um, overall, I think, I think that there is definitely a sort of sense of people becoming accustomed to it and just kind of getting on with their lives um, mm. while this is happening at a really horrific rate in the background. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that we're talking about this is not just because it's an ongoing problem, it's because you've joined us back in Abu Dhabi uh, for a few days now and you now have a fresh perspective, don't you, looking back at where you call home mm -hmm. and realising that, you know, our perception of, you know, from here in the UAE, our perception of the, the States it's possibly not that different to people in the States' as perception of, of, you know, this region. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's something to that. And so um, going back to your previous point about um, kind of becoming accustomed or inured to um, gun violence, um, it's taken me, it's taken coming out of America. I still get the um, ping notifications on my phone. Mm -hmm. So the last few days there's been several incidents, uh, including a... Uh, mass shooting at a birthday party for a 16 year old in Alabama yeah. and it's seeing this um, sort of constant clicking onto my phone of these incidents um, while being over here, here we are in Abu Dhabi, it feels very safe, there's um, almost yeah. zero gun crime here yeah. um, and then it's sort of like well wait when I see this on my phone it's like this isn't normal, yeah. this should never be normal, this should never be considered something that is routine um, and I think a lot of people in America they don't really understand uh, this region or it's or they stereotype it a little bit and they think that we're in a very violent um, uh, part of the world but actually looking back to America from here mm. I'm like I live in a very violent part of the world and that's what's really sort of struck me about the last few days here in Abu Dhabi. Yeah I mean if we were to I don't want, I don't want to uh, force you to come up with numbers but mm. I know that you do know the number of guns in America yeah. compared to the number of people slash households. So can you just share with people what yeah, that is? So, um, there's, there's, uh, there, it's a little bit hard to track the number of guns just because there are so many and not all of them are registered, but there's between 350 million and 400 million 
uh, guns in the US today. Um, to put that in perspective, there's 330 million people, so mm. there's more than one gun per person. There's 140 million households, so there's more than two guns per household on average. Obviously, not every household has a gun. Mm -hmm. Some houses have several. Um, there's more guns than there are cars. Uh, you mm. know, there's, the gu guns are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So other countries have managed to deal with this problem. I know Australia had a very successful gun amnesty. The UK has, has dealt with it very, very efficiently. What, wh why do you think the, the US can't get this under control? Simply because there's no political will to do anything about it. The, the US, um, as everybody knows, is quite polarised and um, the Republican Party refused to take any meaningful action on gun control. It's not a, it, you know, the Republican base um, really like to have guns and they see them as a key to um, personal safety. Mm -hmm. um, America obviously uh, was founded on by revolution and mm -hmm. um, you know the right to the right to own a gun is enshrined in the constitution under the second amendment. Um, so it goes to the very core of uh, American identity, uh, mm -hmm. the right to have a gun. And um, unfortunately one of the things we're seeing is as the increase in gun, gun violence continues then a lot of people think that they need to themselves then get a gun for mm. personal protection. Um, statistics show that if you have a gun, you're more likely to be a victim of gun violence, but people um, don't really consider that so much, and that, you know, more and more uh, Americans are arming themselves. Yeah. So I know this is, this is a very unfair question to put on you, but what, what does the future of this uh, scenario look like you know is it just going to get worse and worse until I mean I know recently I was very shocked to find out that in the states it's not uncommon to have one a day you know one mass shooting a day is it going to then get to five ten I mean what what is this escalating and at what point do you think something will really be done about it so it is escalating and if we look at the data from the last 20 years we can see year by year a steady increase in the number of mass shootings mm -hmm. Uh, and like you say, they're, they're very frequent on a da daily basis now. Um, where it goes is, is a gr great question. Um, there's a lot of issues in America that are playing out. Um, the, the, the root cause of gun violence, if you take the guns out of the equation, is why on earth are people doing it? It's mm. a kind of, it's a radicalization, it's a mental illness. Um, it's a hopelessness, because a lot of people who carry out these shootings themselves then go on to, to die. So it's just mm. kind of, you know, it's a very... Um, it's a very sort of coming from a place of great hopelessness. Mm. Um, so w where will it go from here? Um, I'm rather uh, pessimistic on this, uh, given that there's no political will to do anything. Uh, I get e emails from uh, Republican candidates, including Donald Trump, mm -hmm. who are fundraising um, based on the Second Amendment. Mm. And they're saying, you know, if we're back in power, we promise you we'll never touch your guns. We promise you there'll be even fewer gun controls. Mm. Really, in many states, there are almost no gun controls at the moment. You can, you can basically buy one with very limited background checks, and in many places, you can carry one openly. Mm. Um, so I think it will, will, bec it will become an increasingly um, kind of almost militarized society in that, in, in that regard, unless there's, unless there's something that um, is big enough to sort of change, to, to shift public opinion such that there would be greater willingness to, um, to accept some kind of gun control. But I don't think we're there yet, and I don't see it coming anytime soon. Mm. Well, thank you for your uh, you know, honest perspective on it. It's something that we here absolutely do not have to deal with at all. And so to speak to someone who's over there and sort of living amongst it and, and having to report on it as well daily, it's, very, it's, uh, it's really enlightening to get your opinion. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Okay. Well, that's it for this week's episode of A Closer Look, filmed right here in the Nationals newsroom. Thank you for watching. And remember, all of our previous episodes are on our YouTube channel. And if you have any suggestions for a future episode of A Closer Look, you can always drop your comments in the box below.